Hey, so today I'm gonna to do a bit of a, a more in-depth review on my, here it is, my camera, my new food camera. And I say new, it is kind of old, but I wanna give you a bit more of an in-depth review now, I've had time to use it. I've used it on professional jobs, I've used it on test shoots, and I've just had a general play around with it over the last two months. Now, the whole reason for getting this is because I just couldn't get enough depth of field um, from certain angles with my camera. Uh, shooting at 45 degrees was a nightmare because I could never get enough in focus for the client, even at like f22, which then meant we had to do focus stacking and that's a real pain and the images never look quite right. So we upgraded. Now the camera itself is still the 5DSR, um, which I think is a great bang for buck sensor. It's high resolution, it's 50 megapixels, it's incredibly sharp, it's great at 100 ISO, and that's pretty much all I need it for. It's just a sensor with a shutter in there. Now the Actus camera itself, it, it attaches via a bayonet mount. So it's basically like attaching your camera to a lens, but that lens is now an extension of bellows. And then another lens goes on the end. You can choose which lenses and which cameras you want to put on it. I chose Mamiya because it was available to me. Um, and I've been using the 127 mil, the 90 mil and the 50 millimeter Mamiya lenses. And they're the Secor C lenses, which I really do like. I've done a bit of a comparison. I'll pop the Dropbox link below actually so you can download those images if you want to and have a little look at them and just see if you can spot the difference. I digress. Anyway, there have been some great things with this. Um, I shot a small campaign for a small company um, and I used this particular setup for it as the first trial out there into the, the big foray of commercial world. And it did great. We managed to shoot at 45 degree angles with a complete depth of field at F10. There was no need for focus stacking. It made post-production much quicker. Delivery was same day. And that, that was a real game changer for me. We then had other slight perks to it as well. So when you're using a big tripod stand like this one here, or oh, it's not called a tripod stand, a salon stand, Moving it is fine for big movements, but when you need to go two millimeters to the left, it's a bit more tricky. It's not quite as precise. Um, and having those movements on the back of the camera to move the sensor up and down and left and right to really fine tune the composition has been incredibly useful. That is something I'm eternally grateful for. Likewise with the swing, which is your lens going like this and the tilt, which is kind of like this. I'm doing some weird dance now. That has been very useful too. Now, the tilt is much better as an action than the swing on this camera because of the way it's designed. The movement of the swing just isn't quite as good. And it's also worth noting that the rise and fall, there's no real lock off for that. You can lock off the left and right shift, but not the up and down. And that's been a problem. And it's meant that I've had to Velcro on a remote shutter because you can't actually use the camera to fire the image. Because if you do, by the time you do the next frame, it's slightly unaligned. And a lot of my work involves back plates and generally compositing things together, or at least, you know, having the option to, even if we actually generally don't end up doing it. So that's not been so good, but I've got a good workaround for it. The other real downside to it is sensor dust. Because it's bellows, they're literally, as you would imagine, with like your fireplace bellows, if you happen to live in the olden days, they blow air. And in the air is dust. So I've been cleaning my sensor once a week, not with a proper clean it tall, I just, you know, give it a good blow with a blower and try and bang it on the back a little bit and do the inbuilt sense cleaning. Gets rid of most of the dust, there's still the odd speck in the corners, but that's so, you know, I can live with that. Now, something that has been great has been the Mamiya Secor lenses. I struggle to say Mamiya. Because they have a manual aperture, which means you move the aperture and the blades stay in place with a bit of gaffer tape. I actually have to push a bit around and tape it in place to work properly, but, we digress yet again. That has been great for when I'm doing multiple exposures because my flash is incredibly consistent, but the problem I had with Canon and Carl Zeiss lenses was every time the aperture closes and you're sort of past f4, it's not as accurate as one would think. You'll get a wide variety of exposures, you end up with flickering images, and if you're trying to do composites or have back plates available to you, then that can be a real problem. It can really hinder your edit, and you then have to fine tune each frame to make sure they're the exact same exposure, and it's it's a general nightmare, but this has been great. The optical performance of these lenses is brilliant. The 50 millimeter and 90 millimeter are as good as my Zeiss, and the 127 I'd say is about as good as a Sigma art lens. Maybe not quite as sharp, but it renders as nicely. The other major benefit is when you stop these lenses down, they don't suffer from chromatic aberrations as quickly. Now, I don't fully understand the science behind this because it's very boring, 
But basically, when you stop down a 35 millimeter lens to a certain point, you get chromatic aberrations. Photographers hate it. It doesn't look too good. Clients don't really notice. But with these lenses here, you can go all the way down to f22 and you're still pretty good. The image quality is really, really nice. Now, I bought this as a bit of a, a whim. I'd say a whim, I'd researched it a lot. I bought it not being really sure if I was going to keep it. And with that, I kept all of my Canon lenses. However, I have now sold all of my tilt shift lenses, my 50 millimeter prime. I've not yet got round to selling my Zeiss 100 mil. I'm not sure if I will, because I'll still use it for some video work sometimes, and I just really like the rendering from that lens. So I might keep that, but it's a over a thousand pound lens just being kept. It's not a great business decision, but then, Maybe an emotional decision is okay in this instance, but I'm fully sold on the Actors system, the Cambo Actors system. It is absolutely brilliant. I wish I'd gone for it sooner. Anyone who is a still life product or food photographer should really be considering looking at a similar style of camera body because the options it opens up to you are just huge. Yes, you're gonna be stuck to being on a tripod. I don't believe you could possibly use it handheld or I'll have a go and report back to you, but I think you'd be struggling. It is far better than any of the tilt shift lenses I've used for Canon. And also it is far cheaper. Yes, you have to spend just over a grand on the actual body, but then whatever lens you put on the end of it is a technical lens because you have a technical camera. Now there are certain upgrades you can do to this system to make it have even more movements. You can get tilt, shift and swing front and rear standards, and you can really build it out. And that's probably something I am going to do once I reach the limitations of this particular system. I'm not there yet. It's probably gonna be a year or so until I think, well, do you know what? I'd really like to be able to move the rear plane in this direction as well as the front plane, but I'm not really in a position where that is something I often think that would be useful. The occasional time, but there's always been a workaround or it's just been a nice added extra rather than something that's needed. Anyway, that's my review of the camera. I'm going to do a separate video showing you how it focuses and how it can achieve these great depths of field. Until then, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.